So look, well, let's talk about the compliance risks with AI. Who wants to kick that one off? Yes, Satish. Sure. Compliance and risk. I mean, it's, it's a huge area, of course. I mean, based off the, the nature of models and, and thanks to the regulations we have currently in place, uh, Prior to any AI regulation which we have, we, we are governed by SR 11.7 from a banking financial supervision perspective, where every model which is built has to have some clarity in terms of the data which is getting inputted into the models and then uh, and how the model really transforms that data and then how the output of the model really comes out of the this whole syst uh, whole chain of model, right? So. So that, that piece has to be transparent, and of course the explainability is a natural byproduct of it, and that's the major area which needs to be focused and which is needed for all the regulators in general. How the model makes the decisions and what are the guardrails in place is one of the big topic, and, and once you get into those territory, you need to prove the data lineage aspect and uh, data privacy. If there's not been a breach to any uh, sort of intellectual property, so on and so forth. Thanks. Yeah, maybe I could just add to that. I mean, I'm very similar to what you just said. I was with a big investment bank, like a top five global investment bank, uh, the other week, and they were talking about the fact that they need to develop model risk management processes for generative AI, and they just don't have them today, right? I mean, they have model risk management for traditional machine learning, and so if you want to put a traditional machine learning uh, process into production, there is a there's a review board, there's a set process you have to go through. People know they bring all the test results, all the evidence of uh, lack of bias and so forth. They can get their traditional machine learning uh, model approved by the model review board. But for generative AI, they don't even have the rules established, right? So, so actually scaling, putting these things into production is a problem from, from that perspective. I agree completely. I mean, I think I was referring loosely the term AI in general, but for generative AI, in fact, within the AI space itself, it's not yet standardized on how the models have to be developed. There are no model development lifecycle standards in general across the industry. When you compare with the software development lifecycle, I think we are far uh, behind in terms of standardization. And obviously on generative AI, it's tough to uh, really get to that standards. As you can see that every prompt can really change the whole output and there's no way to trace back that. So I, I think it's still an evolving space for us to really trace back those decisions on and, and contextualize for each prompt how the output has been attained and trace that clarity, yeah. Yeah, because that reminds me of, um, you know, the SEC is recently cracking down on, for example, accountability with, with, uh, with ESG. And, and that, rem like, so to me, that sounds like something that will very much be in the SEC's crosshairs in terms of if, uh, particularly if you're using, uh, L generative AI or LLMs to make decisions or recommendations. It sounds like something the SEC is going to want to see a rationale for what data was used, how you arrived at it. Did, did someone want to add to that? Um, I mean, so I, I, a couple of things. I think um, uh, both uh, Ruben and Satish are making great points about the process. And I would say that as we start to see the space democratize more, we get more third-party tools that users can just pick up and use, it's going to exacerbate the problem because those, those folks won't have in-house, you know, a, a advisory board maybe that approves AI models. Um, and then to your point, Michael, you know, uh, yes, the SEC came out with a statement, uh, I think it was back in uh, over the summer, June or July. Um, and then I, I don't know if folks know this, but um, this was exactly one week ago today, Monday of last week, uh, President Biden issued an executive order around AI. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, point being, this is a very fast evolving space um, and quickly changing space. So really, um, you know, if, if you're going to adopt the technology, you need to be able to monitor and adapt to that. Martin, yeah. Yeah, yeah so there's multiple ways to approach this. Uh, most organization, organizations start from a policy perspective, develop AI policy and frameworks. And that's what I've been working on, uh, we've been working on over the last year or so. This year was bringing some of the best practices from uh, DevOps, from software development life cycle, into uh, model development life cycle. And embedding those policy, the standard uh, 
uh, uh, the, the standards that come out of those policies into the process as opposed to inspecting them into the product. So you can start from there. But the biggest challenge to this space is that, like you said, it evolves real fast. It's at warp speed. So that uh, legislation and regulation is not keeping up with this. So we have to self-regulate. -reg uh, so it requires certain things. So you think of AI as this kid that can learn bad habits. So you built a good uh, model today. There's no guarantee that the model is gonna generalize well six months from now. Like some models we built before COVID, after COVID they started drafting. There are certain things that happen, especially within. Uh, well, effect, it, was it that effectively you'd over un, un, unknowingly, unintentionally, it overfit based on the yeah. recent past? Yeah, but but because because models learn new tricks today, most models uh, can use reinforcement learning. So if you have a model that is exposed, it's uh, exposed to the public, and it learns from public, and it gets better over time, it also has the risk of getting worse over time. There's also the risk that the data that was used to build it had its own inherent bias in it. And there's one component that's always missing that we, most people who build AI models are technologists. So most technologists don't have the well-rounded training to be able to be self-aware. So some of our biases will in, invariably bleed into those models. And when these models become black uh, boxes, then it becomes a special challenge because that risk is now transferred to the organization that has deployed that model that could create problems down the line. 